Hey there, this is Paul. In this video, I want to talk about quality and specifically non-conformance reports or NCRs. For a lot of companies, NCRs are a necessary evil or something they don't even really do that much. If you're an ISO or AS or a certified company, obviously it's a requirement to do NCRs, uh, but often the process for doing those is very tedious, very paper driven, or if you have an ERP system that has an NCR module, they're very likely not intimately connected to the actual daily operations. You go to a separate module, create something, it's kind of a, its own little isolated island. We take a fundamentally different approach to this at ProShop. We believe that nonconformances are an incredibly strategic tool for driving quality improvements, uh, reducing the cost of quality and making your company better so you can serve your clients better. So I wanna talk about how nonconformances are generated, how they're connected into all the other data and how we provide access to make decisions. So we're starting here on this system home screen, which has our quality objectives and links to some of our KPIs. Uh, so NCRs would be certainly associated with internal quality as well as supplier performance. So let's just take, go take a look at those. So here on this dashboard for nonconformances, we are seeing a list of NCRs in the last month in this case. We can see what our scrap rate is right here. And then we're seeing a list of nonconformances that are actually already grouped into, in this case, cause code. Um, these yellow ones, by the way, on the left-hand side, these are the nonconformance numbers. The green ones are complete. The yellow ones are still outstanding, have not been dispositioned yet. So we can mouse over those, see what they are. And of course, because ProShop is browser-based, we just click onto those links to go check those records out. And then we have all sorts of other metadata about the, the non-conformances. We can see what work orders, what part numbers, what clients, the NCR and cause code, you know, dispositions, if there are some yet, uh, responsibility, what machines and work centers those non-conformances were generated at, uh, even which users uh, you know, created those non-conformances, uh, who they were assigned to for resolution, dates and number of parts affected. And down in the bottom here, we can slice and dice this information any way that we want. We could choose to look at, you know, maybe NCR code instead, or I want to only look at our day shift or night shift staff, or only certain work or, you know, certain work centers. Or I could even add in, you know, vendor type rejections and returns from customers. So we can do this any way we want. We can, we can run new reports. We can even easily copy this out to CSV if you want to do something with it but we, we recommend keeping it in the system so it's always live and up to date. Uh, so these, these work order or these non-conformances are typically generated from a couple different places. So let's go take a look. We're gonna start with supplier performance here and then we'll go look at work orders. Uh, so in this supplier performance dashboard, we can see a, date, a, time, a time range, a date range, uh, and the vendors that we have issued purchase orders for in that range. And we're, we're, we are tracking quality uh, and on-time delivery performance and some objective, objective subjective measures as well. But over here in this far column, you can see this NCRs and, and, and corrective actions as well. So these are hyperlinks. So if I wanna click on this one for Browco Metals, for example, and come pull up their actual non-conformance, we can see exactly what happened here. They sent us some material that was that was not straight. This is obviously an exaggeration, but uh, I found it on the internet. I had to use it. Um, so this is twisted. You know, this was the NCR and, and cause code. We dispositioned it, sent back for credit. Uh, it's a vendor responsibility. And we can just click right here to go see exactly where this was generated in the first place. So this was generated during the receiving process of this material, right? We ordered some material. We rejected one here. We sent it back for, um, for credit. And when we click this NCR button, this generates the nonconformance record. So we can do that here uh, by line item. We can also, if we need to reject the entire thing, we can just come right up here and create both a nonconformance or even a corrective action as well. So that's one way things are generated uh, from a vendor perspective. Let's go take a look at a work order. So in ProShop, every part number can have an inspection plan designed and created for it that then gets executed on work orders. Uh, so you can develop, and let's just go take a look here. 
um, if we're going down to this machining operation, I can see a couple things. Here we can actually see the inspection plan itself. So this was imported through an import process or possibly created manually, but we tie in with a lot of balloon tagging softwares. So you can import this after you do the balloon tagging. Um, and this inspection plan will then get executed both in the form of a first article inspection report or a uh, in-process QC as you're running production. You can see here that there's this one that's standing out as, as red. Um, we can see the time date stamp of, of when, that, when that NCR was generated um, or when that, non you know, that, that out of tolerance condition was generated. And if I double click on this, that will allow me to go straight in and look at the nonconformance that was associated with that dimension. Um, so we can see it was positional, uh, there was a feature location problem, setup error, you know, Brian was the user. This is even the serial number. We tie in this to serial numbers. If you have serialized parts, um, it was assigned to the QA lead. It was a misload. They are suggesting to improve the fixture. When, uh, when this nonconformance gets created, ProShop will automatically send alerts to a number of different people that are listed on a list. So they can immediately get notified about the nonconformance. And of course the QA lead um, will also get notified, who in this case happens to be Brian, but uh, they will get notified that they have been assigned a nonconformance uh, that they need to, to work on. In this case, there's also a picture and a disposition here to scrap. Uh, let's go back to this other page and I actually wanna show you how a nonconformance is created, just how easy it is. So let's say we're checking this bore um, it's supposed to be 420, I'm going to say 432, that is well out of tolerance. ProShop instantly recognizes that's out of tolerance and prompts us to create a nonconformance report. Now, if I had typoed this, and in fact it was, I meant uh, 22, I could hit cancel and fix my typo. If indeed this is bad, then I will click OK, and that will immediately generate the nonconformance, pull this metadata in. I'm just going to go ahead and hit save here with my fast key and uh, I don't need, to, I don't necessarily need to fill in the NCR and cause code. We could leave that to our quality staff. So a machinist or an inspector could just generate the report. Again, people get notified right away through the messaging system and they can click on that link to come see here. But uh, you'll notice that all of this data, you know, the part number, the client, the customer PO, even the drawing revision, and I can even just pull this up to see which dimension we're talking about. That's all at our fingertips here. Uh, work order, machine, person, it's all collected. I didn't need to fill any of that out manually. So NCRs can really just take, you know, literally a couple of seconds to generate. And the when the overhead of generating an NCR is so low that it become it can become an effective tool to make sure you are you're always gen generating NCRs when you have a part or batch of parts that have some that have some issues. And then that data can generate that improvement activity to lower that cost of quality. One other thing I wanted to mention here on a part number type basis um, is when, when all this metadata is collected, uh, we then enable reporting of that in very easy ways. So if I come to this part number record, this is the plan, including the inspection plan, but I have a, a link right here for a part level NCR breakdown. So I can click that link. This opens up an entire report of nonconformances just for this part number only. And if I come down to the bottom, I can see my total scrap rate for this part number alone. And I can do things like, let's take a look at cause code uh, just for this one part number. So, and this part number, I can see that setup errors have been the number one cause. So maybe we need some training on how to do the setups. Maybe we need some better documentation on how to do the setups. And of course, since all of that resides in ProShop, it's a very easy closed loop process to make those improvements. One last thing I wanna share is the actual like nonconformance codes and cause codes. That is just in the configuration of ProShop. Uh, this is a, a page where ProShop will ship with an entire set of codes into different categories like dimensions, assembly, deburr, appearance, documentation. Um, but you can create all your own. You can replace these, add to them, do anything that you'd like. So I hope that uh, gives you a little bit 
more understanding of how we think about quality, how we think about improvement activities in ProShop. Um, it is not an exaggeration to say that we hear from many, many clients that their quality managers are saving on a daily basis 25 to 50% or more of their actual time, right? When they're not chasing paper, when things take seconds instead of minutes or hours, um, and they have they can work on not the administration of quality, but the actual improvement of their quality system and delivering better performing parts to their clients, better quality, more profitability, all around good stuff. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this. If you have any questions about this or anything else about ProShop, we look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks.